All right, welcome back, guys, to the Collegiate Smash Showdown provided by EMG. I'm Max Cashin from EMG, and I'm joined by Radar. How's it going, bro? Not too bad. I'm really happy to be here. It's really exciting to cast the kind of last sets of matches. Um, I've seen, I've at least heard that there's been a lot of uh, exciting stuff, and um, I'm really excited to be here. And like I said, uh, interested to see this match. Falco, in particular, a character I play a lot, and Sheik, I think, is a character that's sort of kind of on the come up a bit, like obviously it's been an established good character for a while, but she kind of fell off for a bit, and I think um, we're seeing more and more Sheiks. Yeah, I think she's a good call in the Marth heavy meta too, so I'm glad she's making a return. That's also my main character, so always happy to see her do some work. But we got PhDs nuts and Starlight repping UCLA and University of Michigan. So it's the loser semifinals. These guys battled all the way through some regional qualifiers to get here, and now they're duking it out for that national title. Oh, all right, she getting kicked right in the face and a fat two-stock lead on the part of, I believe, University of Michigan. Yeah, no, I actually really kind of think, the thing I like about this matchup is you can kind of approach it in a couple different ways. Um, although what we're seeing is, is just kind of a lot of straight aggression and speed. Usually what I was going to say is that some of the deviations you see is sometimes it's a more defensive kind of poke-based style where you try to bait the Sheik in and punish her, especially at lower crowd cancel percents, but uh, I guess it's Starlight, right? That That is the Falco. Yep. Um, just has kind of quite a handle on the matchup so far. Yeah, he's just been smothering Sheik. No need to bait, you know, at least in this match for him. He's just rushing her down, doing a great job. You get the shine pop up, no ball up. He's just gonna wait. High percents, you can't land those easy uh, aerials right afterward yet, or anymore, rather. Yeah, but it does look like a little tech club gets a tiny opening, but unfortunately PhD's nuts not able to hard to take that tag seriously. Not able to kind of capitalize on that. I think, you know, so often in Smash, like that punish game is, is just such a huge part of, of the match. But like you said, in this particular set, or at least game, um, it's just a speed thing, a lot of this, just not being able to kind of keep up with the options that Starlight is choosing. Yeah, so hard to challenge Falco's giant hitboxes too. Oh yeah, gonna rush in. He's looking for these pop-ups with dash attack. Gonna pay it. a huge price. You know, that's one of those little approaches that you can see that differs when you're watching a crew battle is he probably could have jumped off and got the dare there, but he played it a bit safer because he's like, you know what? Why lose a stock? Like, there's no point in trading even though I'm up. And manages to close it out with a three stock. Uh, you know, like only losing one stock, which is really impressive. Yeah, very solid. Now up 15. 212 for his team. So shout out to University of Michigan starting off really strong. I did hear that they were barely sent to the losers bracket by University of Maryland. So I mean, it makes sense that these guys are putting on such a good show and they might get that run back as soon as they head to losers finals if they win the set. Yeah, it's actually pretty impressive. Um, I think one of the things that we sort of have been talking a lot about lately in the community is just kind of how many players are sort of all leveling up in the same way. Like there's just a lot of kind of overall higher tier of players. And um, I'm sure there's going to be people I see that are clearly far along in a crew battle that are very, very good that I might not even have heard of. And I, I follow the scene pretty closely. So that's what's really fun about these kinds of events, you know, is you get to see like, holy crap, there's a lot of good people that are still in that kind of top, like one to 2% of players, but maybe we don't know their name yet. Yeah, definitely love how Collegiate Smash kind of shines a light on those guys. And also... I mean, there are some top 100 players here, right? Like we have oh, yeah, trains on the University of Michigan side, a really good cheek in his own right. And it makes sense that Starlight's probably quite practiced in that matchup. Um, yeah. No, absolutely. I'm just looking through the bracket now. It's it's definitely, yeah, anytime, anytime you have a top 100 player, um, even though right now we have a slippy kind of evening things out in terms of direct practice, uh, it still can be really useful. You know, you're, especially in a crew battle setting, you're going to get like, coaching to some degree you're going to get uh someone who's maybe more strategically minded in terms of how to approach it you know crew battles have kind of uh we haven't seen them as often lately and so there there is something to be said for like a good crew battle uh what's the word like team and spread as opposed to just like being a good player like you know maybe you want an ices in there maybe you want like a mars to deal with the spaces that kind of thing so i think seeing the list themselves as well is pretty interesting yeah, there's definitely a, a very different meta game, and even though only one pair of hands is on the controller at a time, there's still like four brains versus four brains. Mm -hmm. And um, characters like Ice Climbers, absolutely, I agree, is a, a, they're a, a huge boon to any team. So just having them on your roster could 
provide you a massive amount of stocks for no reason, right? Like the margins you win the games on or it buy is actually huge. So counter picks are very strong as well. You know, you'll definitely want like a Marth. So you're able to pick uh, into spaces and take a lot of stocks, create a huge lead going in, etc. No, absolutely. Yeah, I, I think the other thing too that like makes crew battles a bit different from kind of what people are used to seeing at least is even though it is like you said, there's only one hand on the controller, it is a single player game. The vibe is different. You know, anyone, if, if people who are watching have never played like in a crew battle at home, uh, I've definitely seen some people become almost like like buffed up by the by the crowd by the team like they, they've got the kind of their their boys on their back and they're like yo like i'm gonna get 10 stocks whereas when they're playing for themselves it's uh there may be the passion the kind of energy isn't there so sometimes you see players like they get like a little bit of a, a boost just because they're they're playing for someone else exactly yeah feeding off the energy and even if it's not a live event right like these guys are all playing from home right now but you can still feel it, you know what I'm saying? Smash oh, yeah. captures that energy in such a good way. And of course, like not only your teammates, but all the alumni and spectators from your school cheering you on could definitely power somebody up or make somebody crumble alternatively. But I like I'm to think say, that, yeah. you know, people generally channel it positively. I think it, I think it's tricky. I think anyone who's in the losers finals, uh, you know, winner finals, et cetera, that's made it this far. I think they're more likely to be in the category of, of kind of boosting it up. I know when I used to play uh, I'm definitely like, this is stressful, man. But um, here we are once again with the Falco Sheik. We still got uh, the same Falco, but no, actually, yeah, 52%, I guess, is the Sheik. Yep, and don't be fooled, guys, just because uh, UCLA has five players on their roster, they still can only field four for the crew battle, just in case that threw anybody off. But yeah, uh, another Sheik coming out two in a row. I mean, not what you want to see when your opponent is on Falco, right? But there are other matchups. Uh, I mean, it's either Fox or Sheik. <laughs> Just take your pick. Yeah. yeah, and you know, I think this matchup is kind of like split. I, as a Falco player, I kind of think that Falco wins, but I've also met plenty of players on both sides that think it's even or think it's slightly favored. So I think a huge part of it really is like, how good is Sheik at the Reaction Tech Chase game? How good is she at kind of like not pushing into kind of some of Falco's like really, really safe hitboxes like that kind of back air, retreating down air, that kind of stuff. So I'm interested to see how 52% plays it out. Yeah, for sure. Sheik is one of those characters where like her matchup ratios are so far from being set in stone just because of mm -hmm. how far uh, reaction tech chase can take you against the space season at least. So we'll see how 52% uh, is able to do here. I mean, so far both players losing a stock has been pretty even. Yeah, definitely we're seeing um, before there was that sort of like, it's not that it's they're not using a rushdown style, but before they were kind of able to just blindly attack them being Starlight. And now 52% uh, has a bit more kind of, of a way of dealing with certain approaches about spacing in a way where like, you can't just run in an attack because a slight, you know, wave dash back or something can kind of be your demise. So it's a lot closer of a game, which is always fun to see. Oh, gets the shine, but misses the up air. Wouldn't have killed, but still good momentum. And he's keeping the pressure on. Starlight, just not letting this man breathe at all. He's so good at staying on top of Sheik's. Seeing him play maybe a little bit more patient than he was in the last game, though. Yeah, definitely good awareness there to go for the up smash. Doesn't end up killing, but still puts uh, Falco in a decent position. Um, although, when Sheik is above him, Falco, I wouldn't say has the same kind of pressure tools as a character like Marth or even Sheik herself with a really, really powerful up air. Falco's up air, it's okay. It's, it doesn't kind of do that same sort of zoning. So you'll see certain positions where Falco really, really has an advantage and you know, Sheik being above him, it's kind of like more of a neutral one. Yeah, exactly. You got to settle for something like back air, which doesn't reach quite as high if you want to actually kill them in a lot of spots like that. Okay, we're just going to see him uh, regrab the edge a couple times. Shine pops him up, but yeah, 180. Good luck getting anything off of that. But Ooh, what a neutral air. Yeah, actually, like, really, really solid. A lot of the decisions that Starlight made there, I really like. Like, for starters, they went for the kind of laser shine, which is generally pretty safe on shield, especially if you put that laser quite low. And they were going for things like F tilt. We even saw them close it out with a Nair. And that kind of stuff is like someone who recognizes, look, they're at like 180%. I don't need to do a hard commitment. I don't need to do a, a down air on shield or something. I can kind of just play safe and push my lead even further. And that's why we're seeing Starlight take so many stocks. 
Yeah, absolutely. Just chip them out gradually, right? On the verge of now potentially seven stocks of UCLA's roster if Starlight keeps this one going. How the pack him up smash. I still am like impressed with 52% as well. Even though that you know, didn't take that many stocks. Um, like, you know, they, well, it depends. Like they've taken two so far. They might close at the third. Um, a lot of the stuff they've been doing, I like the aerial drift. I like the kind of aerial choices, like using Nair, kind of pressure off of certain uh, shield drop options. It, it, definitely, overall, like I'm impressed. It's a good player. That, and that they close it out. So good stuff to 52. Yep, not quite landing that ledge dash and then missing the tech as well. We're going to see Starlight finally go out, but taking an entire seven stocks away. I mean, that's almost half of their roster. Looks like UCLA is really on the back foot here, but 52% at least doesn't have to fight that demonic Falco again. So he might have a, a little bit of a better chance going into the next match. He needs to super clutch up and take like, I'd say at least two stocks here just to keep these guys in the running. Yeah, and like the good thing about Sheik as a character is, is she can get sort of early gimps, obviously it's on Spacey's in particular, but like, and it's not that she's a cheesy character at all, but she has access to cheese in a way that like mm -hmm. Mar and Fox and some other characters do. Not really Falco, actually, like, you know, Falco doesn't really have as many like early gimps in the same way. So we could see 52% uh, really turn it around if, uh, you know, they get a couple cheeky needle edge guards and that kind of thing, a back throw or two off the edge. So who knows? Yeah, for sure. Sheik's X factor is very high. And, you know, that's why I feel like it's hard to put a number on a lot of matchups for just because if you're getting maximum output, like she can win against everybody, but she could also lose against those characters if they just get to play their fully fleshed out game plan as well. So I think the less time on the screen, the better when you're Sheik against Spacey's especially. No, yeah, I think that's a fun term, like the X factor, kind of just sort of where kind of can you put it? And I, I really like that sort of conversation about just the matchups themselves not being that figured out because obviously everyone knows Melee has been out for almost 20 years and we see certain matchups like Fox Dittos, Fox Marth, you know, has been on Twitter conversation a lot lately. She, the character that's been around for a long time, but I think we have a lot of room to push that character. I think there's like a lot of small things um, particularly even we talked about reaction tech chases, but I think there's like, you know, sort of like platform stuff, um, little aerial choices, ways to kind of like reset certain situations. I can think of so many stuff, so many things that like we aren't seeing in the same way. So I think that's what's fun about like watching a character that a player that we may, maybe don't see as often. Well, now we're seeing Heartstrings, a very, very capable player. Um, just see sort of ways they approach situations we're not used to seeing. Looks like the University of Michigan has no intention of slowing down the lead, sending them probably their highest ranked player. I mean, definitely their, their highest ranked player on the PGR. So, I mean, this is uh, just a way to keep the momentum rolling. They don't want to even risk letting 52% get something rolling. Yeah, although the one thing that you could uh, question a bit strategically is, you know, this is the ditto. This is a matchup where chain grabs can be really, really, really punishing. And, you know, to some degree, Whenever you have a very, very, very strong punish, although just as I say that, it looks like 52% uh, is going to get cleaned up. But what I was going to say, really, really good stuff to heartstrings there, is that kind of like, say you're playing a set and you take your opponent to FD. Sometimes you do that because you're like, look, they're kind of winning the neutral a lot, but if I can kind of win a couple exchanges and then just really push it further, I can kind of take back some of that advantage. And in a matchup where chain grabs can get you to like 100%, uh, might have been a mistake, but it clearly wasn't. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, heartstrings staying rock solid for that one. But yeah, I totally agree. You know, a player who might be slightly less good than you can still just win because of something like a chain grab, uh, maximizing that punish game. Yeah, they might win neutral less than you, but you know what? It only takes that one time. Unfortunately, not going to see that on 52% uh, end. No, definitely. Yeah. And like, and even if they necessarily still win the whole match like taking a heartstring stock stock even a single one is like all right you know that that's a pretty big victory so uh strategically i guess heartstrings came in felt really confident uh wasn't afraid and it, it definitely did pay off uh i know that the kind of opposing team has basically just sheiks or fox to choose from which you know runs the risk of the same problems for better or for worse so i'm kind of interested just interested to see who they throw out next for sure yeah it could be one grab equals one stock for heartstrings in a lot of these matches here. All right, it sounds like a fox, though. Okay, it's going to be Ty coming out. Uh, mm. 
Slow tie. Uh, slow tie. Yeah, I think it's slow tie. Who went on a tear for UCLA? Uh, Dope was saying he got 11 stocks in a row to open things up in one of their crew battles. So that certainly bodes well for uh, UCLA if they want to make a huge swing here. But he does have a very tall task in front of him with four healthy hard string stocks ready to go. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, again, you know, what we were talking about before you use that term X factor, Fox versus Sheik, they both have that, you know, like, and one of the big things I think we're going to see that can separate that or like, or weaken that X factor is sort of defensive counterplay. So things like on the Fox end, can they SDI jab reset to make the uh, reaction tech chase a lot harder to react to certain things? On or on the Sheik's end, it could be like fast falling to ledge off of a wave shine, just small things to prevent these like really cheap, quick stocks. And here's a reaction tech chase right now as we're seeing saying that. So it doesn't go too far, but still going. Yep, and Fox, of course, with very fast shine off of a knockdown to potentially bail himself out of a sloppy reaction tech chase it is online play as good as Slippy is. You know, sometimes that one or two frames of delay is just enough to mess up your tech chase and get you uh, a jail out of uh, get out of jail free card with the shine it was interesting that uh heartstrings opted to go for that back air in that previous sequence although runoff uh, forward air really really good awareness to know that they had just enough space to get that um yeah no that de definitely a really interesting matchup again one i feel like we're familiar with really beautiful sdi wow that was really, really good oh wow the firefox out of the corner Gonna work out quite well for him. See back air knock him off stage. And yes, just the landing up there. Beautiful surgical chic edge guard right there. Just hold it and deal with the poof onto the stage. Yeah, and I, I think a huge uh, thing that's helping Slow Tie is this FD counter pick. You know, Sheik doesn't have kind of some of the flexibility, especially in that recovery uh, that she would normally, and it makes the edge guards a lot more reliable, which means you should get at least some stocks as long as you're able to knock off her strings off stage. Yeah, 100% a great counter pick. And also Fox's punish game on Sheik here is really strong. Oh, yep, gets got by a B, and is this going to be a stock? No, Heartstrings looking for maybe a lower recovery oh. there, but he still cleans it up. That's brutal. Mm. Oh my gosh. So is all of that right there. Good stock trade, though. I'll take that if I'm University of Michigan any day. Yeah, no, def definitely. Uh, that, that's exactly the kind of sort of explosive power that we see in this matchup. Both characters absolutely capable of taking a quick stock. Um, Heartstrings working very hard to get Fox kind of out of that crouch cancel percent. We've seen uh, Slow Tie already utilize ASDI down a bit to get that tech earlier. So good stuff from Heartstrings to be aware of that in the matchup. I'm liking the movement from Heartstrings, just empty hop wave lands. Trying to stay a little bit elusive, land right outside of that fox grab slash normal range and pick up a forward tilt. And he's just one good confirm away from the stock here and also closing out. Slow ties last. Oh, and that'll do it. Yeah, just really, really solid play generally from heartstrings. Um, slow tie played pretty well. There were moments um, where they were just struggling a bit to kind of get sort of the tempo back, you know, like heartstrings kind of on, on their shield, uh, Fox getting those sort of shine out of shields occasionally, but not really leading to anything, not really being able to sort of reset to neutral truly. And uh, kind of the stocks sort of showed that. Yeah, both players with a pretty sick start, but then it just looked like heartstrings started to pull ahead the longer the game went on. So, man, even despite the FD Fox counter pick still looking really good for University of Michigan. They've got quite a few stocks left, and now we're going to see UCLA down to their last player. So uh, it's either going to be a Fox or a Sheik. They have a couple options uh, due to their extra roster size, but we'll see who comes out and how they're able to deal with heartstrings. I think really like we were saying before, it comes down to, you know, how confident are you in that ditto and your ability to sort of convert off of a couple openings, or do you want kind of the sort of, X factor of Fox, I guess, like that kind of the dynamic sort of and more flexible play style. Um, and I'm not really sure which they'll choose. Ob obviously, strength of the player matters too, but, you know, strategy is a huge part of the crew battle, like you were saying, the meta differences. Yeah, if I'm UCLA, I'm probably thinking about sending in a Fox, just, you know, more of a solid matchup. Of course, the ditto provides mm. you that ability to just cheese them out with some chain grabs. But, I mean, you got to think hard strings, top 100 level chic. It's going to be harder to get those grabs on him. He'll probably be able to execute them as well. So maybe we'll see um, 
just Fox versus Sheik to close it out. Yeah, like you are a little more susceptible to some edge guards, but you've got your own shine gimps that you could go for and just rock solid, like up throw, up air, damage building, you know, just regular Sheik versus Fox matchup stuff that I'd say, you know, of course it's a it's a close matchup, right? It, there is that X factor where she can turn the tables, but I'd probably give it to Fox just slightly. Yeah, I would say that Fox, you know, I, my, I'm of the opinion that Fox wins as well. I think one tricky thing always whenever we look at matchups is like if there is a matchup you have drilled into your brain like that you can close your eyes and imagine every situation, it's versus Fox. So yep. it should be in amazing. a crew battle. Yeah, in a crew battle situation, like, yeah, it's scarier to throw in that chic. And I kind of kind of agree with what you're saying. But I think the counter argument might be like, OK, but if there's ever going to be that consistency, that familiarity, heartstrings just in his element, is it versus Fox? Like maybe. And so kind of maybe you try something else. I think they're probably yeah. debating that now. I totally feel you. You can knock him for a loop with the ditto, right? Like mm -hmm. anyone has probably fought less cheeks than Foxes in their melee career. But 20 years of both of these characters being super high tier, like, I don't know, man. I, I guess it, you probably should know both matchups really well. And it looks like they're going to go with Fox. They're sending in Bobby Barbecue. Just a great bunch of names on the UCLA Honestly, side, by the way. Like some fantastic tags. <laughs> Yeah, so far, you know, not doing too bad of a job. Again, like like I was saying in the earlier matchup, crouch cancel is sort of always a big part of the kind of modern melee meta, but in particular, matchups versus Sheik uh, really, really make a difference. That should be the stock. No, just barely doesn't connect the up smash. You're going to get the forward air anyway, and that should do it. Oh, doesn't go for the back air. Yeah, just waits for him to come on the stage a little bit too high to sweet spot. And that's going to be yet another stock in the books for Heartstrings and University of Michigan. All right, just trying to back up right there and catch the whiff nair from Fox, but nope, Bobby right up in his face. Needs to keep this pressure up, but oh no, another grab, that's not good. Yep, crouch into dash. Seeing these tech chases come out. Oh and looks at it, just, just, just converting it so far. Although I love that tech down. I think one of the things that uh, Heartstrings was really impressed me that we're there with was staying in the corner and not pushing out, forcing it. You know, like Bobby Barbecue uh, correctly applying corner pressure, making it hard for Heartstrings to get out of there. But Heartstrings just kind of waited for the right moment and, you know, established a strong tech chase and look for like that one for them pretty strong. Absolutely, yeah. Heartstrings just playing bread and butter right now. Reaction tech chases, edge guards, dash attacks into forward airs. Nothing too complicated, but that's the nature of Sheik. She can get it done in a pretty simple fashion. And when you're just playing rock solid like this, that generally will go your way. Oh, I love that F tilt, just kind of uh, creating a situation where you could have a bit of a tech trap where you think you're gonna land and then they throw in that F tilt and suddenly you've inputted the tech and now you now you don't land and they can follow it up immediately. Should get that stock though. So this is closer than we might have thought. You know, one stock to close it out, but already at two, so it's looking rough. Yeah, Bobby Barbecue so close to landing that edge hog there. Unfortunately, Heartstrings got right back on. Wow, okay, another quick stock. And that, you know, is a great example of what I was saying earlier is uh, Bobby Barbecue hit the shine and a lower level player might not fast fall to edge and end up in a position where Bobby could get a shine spike. But, you know, at that higher level, they're aware of these kind of situations. They make it so much harder for the player. Let's see where they can take this take, uh, tech chase. Well, Heartstrings dropping it. Not ready for the left roll there. I like the movement, though, on the ground, just catching these openings. Oh, okay. Doesn't swing on the firebox. Thinks he can get it done either way. Oh my and, god. Yep. There it is. Oh, hold on. One more chance. Yeah. The, the, some of the just DI mix up choices there. I um, you know, so often we see a forward air to kind of extend the, oh, they're holding in. I'm going to get a little bit of extra percent. But that was at a percent where they, where they couldn't do that. But heartstrings knowing, you know what? I know they're holding in. I'm going to do a little down air to just sort of build up that extra bit of uh, damage so that they cannot get back. You know, it's just classic good smash, like in general. So that was really good. 100%. Yep. Just that little extra knockback on the next forward air. Totally worth it. And you saw that's how Heartstrings was able to close the door on that game. And unfortunately, on the UCLA run through the Collegiate Smash showdown. So very respectable fourth place to them overall. But it looks like they're just going to get edged out very slightly. And now we have the Michigan versus Maryland run back queued up for losers finals.